problem, we're given triangle ABC, and we know that the, the length of AB is 12, and BC, your C, is 9, and we know that this angle right here is 30 degrees. We want to know what's our third side. To do that, I would use the law of sines because that, that basically says that the sine of 30 degrees, this angle right here, over its opposite side, 9, will equal uh, either of these angles, B or C. We'll pick C because we know this leg over here, so it equals the sine of C over 12. And if we simplify this, we get 4 thirds sine of 30 equals the sine of C. What did I do there? I just multiplied both sides by 12, right? So you get 12 over 9 times the sine of 30 on the left-hand side, which is really just reduced as 4 thirds sine of 30. And the sine of, what is the sine of 30? Well, you can plug this into a calculator if you, if you have forgotten, but it is 1 half. So it's really 4 thirds times 1 half, which is 4 sixth. And that equals the sine of C. Take the arc sine of of C, and and what do we get there? Well, this is again just two thirds, four six is two thirds, and the arc sine of two thirds is sorry about forty one point eight. And actually, you know, you can keep going with this problem. And, and here I, I was tempted, but we have to remember that we're going from from 0 to 1 to 180 degrees in a triangle, right? Um, so we're looking at all the angles in that range that fit our description here. This is my rough sketch of the, of the circle. So if sine of if the sine of 41.81 something equals 2 thirds, and that's kind of like over here, right? This is this, uh, this is the arc arctan of two-thirds, so we we're saying it took this 41 degree angle to get to a height of two-thirds up here. Well, well, is there another angle in this range that will also share a height of two-thirds? With sine, there certainly is. If we're here, we're not going to go down because it will lose the height. Going up, going up, going up, even though my diagram's not working, you're going up, going up, and then you start to turn back down and eventually you'll see the symmetry between the two sides. Now this will have a negative cosine value, but it will also have a positive y value, right? It'll still say two-thirds for the height, right? It'll have some x and then two-thirds. Just like this side would have x and then two-thirds. So what does that mean? Well, since, since you look at the sine of, the sine of this angle and 180, 180 degrees minus that angle, let me plug that in, 180 minus 41.8103. Um, we can also think of this angle as 138.19 degrees, which makes sense because that is about 41 degrees on this side, right? Right, 41 degrees away from this x-axis here. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it just means that if we're not restricting the range of, of degrees from 0 to 90 or you might say 0 to pi over 2. If we're not saying that, then both quadrants can be used. And that's a problem in this case because this angle, little angle over here of 30 degrees matches this one over here of, of 41.8 degrees matches this one over here. So because there's there's two answers, right? We can't use this as a function to figure out the exact length of AC. If we could, if there was some restriction there, we would find the angle C and then reset it and then use that to figure out what what's missing because we'll have we'll have 30 degrees over here, some amount of degrees here. Well, altogether we have 180, so B is just going to be what? It's going to be 180 degrees minus A minus C. Right, we're taking away the angles we're using already. And that's what angle B would be. And then you could say, well, if the sine of A over 9 equals the sine of C over 12. That will equal the sine of B over its opposite side and figure out that side. But they haven't restricted the range enough, right? So it can be more than one answer. So we can't determine the exact value of this problem. 
Now here, um, this, this one threw me off a little bit, but let's just try to sketch it out. In the xy plane, so we're drawing an xy plane. There's our y, there's our x, and an acute angle with a vertex at the origin, so we're drawing a vertex at the origin, is formed by the positive x-axis. There's one bound for us to think about right here. And the line with the equation y equals 3x. Just a line that's going up with the slope of up 3 over 1. Right? There it is. Now what's interesting is it says what is the slope of the line that bisects the that contains the bisector of this angle. Which angle? This one right here. So we're looking for bisectors. Bisectors of that angle. And all we're told really is that this equation right here is equal to is is equal to y equals 3x. And this equation down here is is y equals um, x, which is always going to be zero. So y is zero. And what else are we told? Well, the slope of the line. So they, they, another key word here is the word slope. Tangent is slope because because tangent of an angle equals the sine of that angle over cosine. Right? You can think of tangent as slope. Sine of theta represents y values. Cosine of theta represents x values. So tangent of theta really equals a rate y over x. And that, that's part of what can help us here. And up next, we want to think about what this angle is here. What this point, if we put a point up here, A, what that might mean. And what do we, what do, we do if we put a point down here, like, like B? Well, 